love to Uganda. Good morning in the city of Fort Portal. If you're wondering, Fort Portal does not have a fort. <laughs> yes, it does not have one. So guys, you're having our breakfast before we embark on our day and today's activity. It's all healthy. This is now Gatogo, right? Katogo. Katogo. Mm -hmm. Or oh, in Rwanda, it's Agatogo. Here it is Katogo. And guys, we have so many things. You know, you know why they say Fort Portal is the touristic destination in Uganda. We are going to find out. There are over 15 crater lakes around this place. Like the views we are expecting to see. Hey, Maze, I'm just ready for this. I'm ready for this. If you are just checking into this channel for the first time, we traveled all the way from Mombasa. We went to Jinja and stayed there, did a lot of activities. We went to Kampala, we stayed there and did plenty of other activities that you need to check. Very interesting things by the Uganda is very beautiful. We went to Masaka, we went to Lake Mburo. We come all the way to Porto to just explore the Pearl of Africa. So just catch up and then let's continue with this expedition. So the women had gone to the forest to fetch firewood and they, they saw a, a man, a, a hairy man who was wearing back cloth. He was, <laughs> he was, he was hunting with, with, with his dog. So when they saw the man, they ran back home and told their husbands that they've seen a man in the forest. The men went there, they took the man, they took, them, they took him back to the village and they got him a wife. So they lived peacefully, then one day the man decides to go hunting in the forest and he never go, came back for three days. They kept looking for him, they never found him. But they found his clothes near the hot springs. There's some, some springs, he had disappeared and they found his clothes in the hot springs. Now they, they named that place the Mel Hot Springs. Now they went back home, told his wife that they could not find him, their husband. The, the, the wife went looking for the husband and disappeared again. They went looking for her, they did not find her, but they found her clothes in another spot, a different spot. Now they named it the Female Hot Springs. 
because because the woman the woman's clothes are found there that's how the now that's how the male and the female hot springs were found the clan believe that their ancestors their male ancestors are living under the male hot springs and their female ancestors live below the female hot springs now they they perform rituals annually to appease their ancestors ah. yeah and apparently the semliki national park allows them to get in and access the hot springs to perform their rituals isn't that a nice story that is a very nice story <laughs> most of the time we look at ruenzori it's covered by a lot of mist if you'll just look keenly you'll see the ruenzori mountains they stretch from all the way from kasese to around to here in Fort Portal and that is almost almost 54 kilometers the peak with, which is covered by ice is on the DRC side DRC is Democratic Republic of Congo there is Ruenzori mountains at least right here you can see it a bit clear you can see a lot of settlements up there. Now, this is Ruenzori Mountains. Actually, I've realized that Ugandans are used to staying on elevated grounds. Hills, mountains, they are just okay with it. But they fear rivers. Most of them do not live anywhere near the river. In fact, River Nile has only a few settlements and it's mostly for foreigners. I don't know why. If someone can explain that to me, please do. Someone said they are afraid of spirits. They believe that spirits live in the rivers. Ah! You've been to Mao Depression, Mao Ranges. This is something very similar, but this time it is the mountain. Adia, what can I say? I'm speechless. I am speechless, my people. And yet, some people live down there. You can see all those farms. Oh my god. Came to Uganda. Never in my life did I expect to see this. This was not one of the items I was supposed to see. One of the features. This is not one of them. I just knew there were mountains from a distance and all that. But I didn't expect this. Like at all. This is a nice surprise. That is the Ruenzori Mountains up here. It is even above here. All the way. And this is a viewpoint. So people just come and park here and they watch they watch that view. Isn't that view worth it? Guys, this view is worth it. It's unreal. Ruenzori viewpoint offers the best view of Ruenzori ranges and it is free of charge. So you might want to come all the way. There are plenty of checkpoints along the road and the police officers are very friendly because they just want to confirm if you have the proper documentation. So this road, these checkpoints are because the place is very close to the DRC Uganda border. So they are trying to avoid illegal immigration. For travelers who like hiking, there are some facts you need to know. Ruenzori mountain is not one mountain, it is a range of mountains. It is shared by Democratic Republic of Congo, known as DRC, and Uganda. It stretches from Kasese all the way to Fort Portal. So for you to get to Mount Stanley, which is the highest peak of, of Ruenzori mountains, and it is also located in DRC, you need to go through so many mountains to get to the highest peak that is 5,109 meters high. So do your research and be prepared psychologically.
The four communities that live on this side of Ruenzori Mountains are the Bamba, Bakonjo, Batuku, and Batwa. So, Batwa are the pygmies who are traditionally hunters and gatherers and live on the edge of the forests. Batuku people are cattle keepers and inhabit the open plains of, of the mountains, and Bakonjo cultivate the mountain slopes that you can see. The Bamba people are farmers and also live at the base of Ruenzori Mountains. When you were coming to Uganda, everybody was just telling us go to Fort Portal, but they didn't tell us go to this and this place. Now we almost bailed out on going to see the the hot spring because we said like it's 50 something kilometers away and we only have two days here. It might be too much. But then again last minute we just told ourselves we'll, we might return here maybe so many years to come. When we embarked on this journey, we realized that Fort Portal Bundibugyo Road was not properly marked. So as you are going to Semiliki National Park to see Sempire Hot Springs, ignore the first signpost as the old road was closed. The new road is much better because the old, old road had a lot of cases of landslide and bumpy roads. So. Just go 40 minutes ahead and you'll see the second signpost. And if you, in case you feel like you're getting lost, you can talk to the locals or you can talk to the police, policemen at the checkpoints. They will direct you. Be careful not to get to DRC because DRC is very, very close. If you have come this far to Semuliki National Park, you might want to interact more with nature. So there's, there are a couple of activities that you can do. First of all, you can do nature walk like we are doing. There are so many waterfalls around this place, so you can ask your guide to take you there. You can also do bird watching because there are over 350 species of birds that you might enjoy watching and studying if you love them. And there is also safari walk. There are over 120 species of mammals. First, there are, there are primates like chimpanzees, baboons, red-tailed monkeys, and white and black calabas monkeys. There are also antelopes, buffaloes, and elephants, which come all the way to the hot springs to drink the salty water, and some of them just come to lick the salt. You can also visit Sempire Hot Springs, which, is, which are the female and male hot springs, and it is the main reason we've come this far because it is one of those places that bring people this far and it really did not disappoint. Apart from the mythical explanation of the formation of Sempire Hot Springs, there is also the scientific explanation. During formation of Ruenzori Block Mountain, there are cracks that form at the lines of weaknesses on the surface of the earth. So, whenever it rains, water seeps through these cracks and goes underground to form groundwater, which is like the underground rivers. This groundwater is heated by the hot rocks at the core of the earth and forms some pressure. Then the hot water is released through the cracks of the earth and, get, and it gets out as jets of hot water, forming the hot springs. Semuliki National Park has two hot springs, the male and the female hot springs. They are almost one to two kilometers apart and you can walk for around 30 minutes. You don't really need to take a cab. The name Sempire 
hot springs is derived from the Swahili phrase sehemu mbaya which loosely translates to bad place that refers to the challenging rocky terrain that engineers had to encounter during construction of Fort Portal Bundibugyo Road that cuts across Ruwenzori Mountains. Entrance fee is inclusive of the guide fee, so you don't have to pay the guide separately, but always remember to tip the guide. We were lucky to find our tour guide Richard, who is well traveled and very, very experienced in this job. He has traveled around East Africa and at times takes his clients to Kenya and Tanzania as well. This place has a strong smell of rotten eggs, which is a confirmation of presence of hydrogen sulfide. The water has sulfur, lithium, radium, calcium, and iron, and many salts in it. These salts are considered to have medicinal value for your skin, so it is a natural sauna. After some time, these salt and mineral deposits form a crust on the surface of the hot spring outlet and closes them completely. But due to the underground pressure, this hot water is forced out through other outlets and that is why the hot springs keep shifting positions. There goes the first one. There goes the first one. I think we'll keep it put it somewhere. And you were told how that lake came about? The story of how no. hmm? it has gotten lost. I can see it from Are you sure oh. it's lost? <laughs> Mm? You had that amazing story oh, of how yes. the lake yeah. came into it. Buro and Chi... Chigarama. Yeah. <laughs> Chigarama. Yeah. Buro refused to move to the hills. Yeah. And Chigarama moved and the brother stayed because he thought it was just Ooh. a dream. Mm. The next morning he was... He drowned. Some, some it's quite yeah. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I love those stories. I actually eh? prefer those stories to the scientific explanation. Eh. I love folklore. Eh. <laughs> you know, two are the series last one. all about stories. And there are those that really where you feel Yay. they are connected. How, how many times have you eaten an egg prepared by natural means? Never. This is going to be your first time. Yes, yes. So you add like two to three years on your life expectancy. Amen! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to heat it. Pretty hot. Oh, it's very hot. Just. I'll try this when it cools down. Guys, there feels like sauna. Very nice steam. I, I could stay there the whole day, just like the sauna I had in Masaka. So this was the female hot spring. We're going to the male one now. It is quite some distance, so we might take a car or something, but let's go. As we wait for this one to cool down. Don't worry, you don't have to carry eggs all the way from Fort Portal because you can buy the eggs at the booking office. Every year in November, the Semiliki National Park Administration allows the Bamaga community members into the national park so that they can perform their rituals. This, are, this is the community that believes that their ancestors died at the hot springs and their gods reside in this place. Now, the male gods are believed to be at the male hot springs, so men go there to offer sacrifices and perform rituals so that they can get wealth. The female gods are believed to reside in the female hot spring, so the women go there to perform rituals and offer sacrifices to the 
female gods so that they can have ease during delivery of their children and also to increase their fertility. Another unique feature of these hot springs is the backdrop of the Ruenzori Mountains. This is just the most beautiful backdrop you could ever ask for. I mean guys, can you just believe these views? I find Semuliki National Park to be a very unique place because we saw some very beautiful palm trees that the locals used to make palm oil. This is very unique in East Africa because most of these countries import palmolane oil. If you'd like to stay here for a couple of days, you might want to check out Semliki Safari Lodge for accommodation. So just uh, find out more about them on their website or you can inquire at the ticketing office of the National Park. This egg tastes so weird. Imagine I cannot even finish it. Just kidding. It's just as normal as any egg that would boil in your house. And of course, it's some little salt, salt to make it taste really nice. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, before I finish my egg, when we googled initially, to get to see the hot springs was free of charge. But when we came here, we were charged 15,000 Ugandan shillings per person because we are East Africans. But if you are a foreigner, you pay $75. So remember that. $75. Remember, it's $75 for foreigners, 15,000 Ugandan shillings for East African members. So guys, we are going to our next destination. Guys, every time you Google about food portal, this is the place you this is the place you see, the place we are about to go. This is the place you see. I won't tell you where it is until when you get there. So, let's go as we eat our egg. Seventeen, we're growing up. Sneaking red wine in a paper cup. We saw the world so differently Talk about things we'd never be Seventeen was still so young Waiting outside for you to pick me up Driving so fast we couldn't see Everything changed so suddenly I moved to Brooklyn, you begged me to stay I never called cause you thought that I'd change We both went back on the pact that we made But you're all I know you came to visit, but I found someone Drove to the lake house where we fell in love I couldn't wait cause I thought you moved on But you're all I know I'm tired of running I'm tired of running I'm tired of running from the things that we knew Had to lose it all just to know that it was you I'm tired of running Guys, this is the route we are using. We've just been laughing as we are coming in this direction. The dear right there is saying that by the time we get there, we'll be coughing like a portion meal. Yes, and we'll just keep asking them for a, for a bathroom. We'll take a shower first <laughs> before we get to eat because the road <laughs> is so dusty. Young man, yes. say something. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram versus reality. This is how you get to picturesque places. Imagine. It's not all about tarmac, tarmac roads. Oh, no, no, no. This is the dustiest road I've ever seen. Eh? But we are so sorry. Now you pass by this market. It looks like it's market day. And that looks like some very sweet sugar cane. Look at that. You can see like 
that bananas are the main cash crop here all these trucks those trucks belong to the middlemen yes. they come and buy from farmers and then they take it to towns yes okay. because we are deep in the village eh. would it make sense for them to be buying bananas here yet they are growing a lot of now, if there's ever, ever any request I would make to the Ugandan government, please take care of your access routes and work on the potholes on the main highways. Eh. These access routes are just, eh, eh. they're on another level. So we are here at Aramwaga Rift Valley Lodge for the day trip. Come with us. It's one of those picturesque hotels and resorts in Port Porto, Uganda, that has those. You'll see. You'll see. Let me not let spoil, me it, not for spoil the it for you. Let's but go and watch it together. But I'm telling you guys the route to this place. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Ah. I think they have the concept of tiny homes. So guys, see what is behind me. The famous pods. So this property it is called Ama Aramaga. I don't know why I keep saying Amaraga. Aramaga Lodge. It has only six pods, three on one on one side and three on the other side, and the restaurant and the reception are just at the center. Uh, they, are, they have three fireplaces. There is this one here. There is this one here, another one at the reception, and another one at the center there. So these pods can accommodate a maximum of 14 people in total for the six pods, meaning that there are family rooms which offer more than, which can accommodate more than two people. Uh, something else, it can accommodate six singles, like if each room, if each pod is occupied by one person. It can only accommodate six people, just like the number. So there is a swimming pool, and there is this beautiful view of the Rift Valley. Here is the Rift Valley, and beyond the Rift Valley, you can see there is Ruenzori Mountains. Uh, it is a bit misty, but I'm told when it is not this, when the sun is, the sky is clear, you can be able to see Lake Albert, and uh, what's the name of the river again? Sembliki River. Yes, and Sembliki, Sembliki River and Lake Albert. Apparently, Sembliki River uh, drain, pours from Lake George, Lake Edward. from Lake Edward, and it pours its water into Lake Albert. And Lake Albert is also at the border between Uganda and DRC. So Uganda and DRC share a lot, the same way DRC and, and Rwanda also share a lot of natural resources. Now guys, at the top, you see that thing up, up there? Those are hot tubs. So if you want some hot tub, maybe in the evening it's getting late and you, or maybe if you want to have a sundowner while you're in your hot tub, you just get up there, they'll provide you with the hot water. I don't know if there is a pump in, the, in, each, in each pod or they provide the hot water. I'm not very sure about that. We have not come here to sleep but you've come here for the day package. I know all of you are wondering, how much is the day package? Day package means you come, you swim, you have your three course meal, you enjoy the environment, you have the views, you take your photos, name it. That is what the day package means. And each person, each one of us, paid 150,000 Ugandan shillings. 150,000 Ugandan shillings is, is almost 6,000 Kenyan shillings. Yeah, we are yet to try the food and then we'll tell you if it is worth the price that you paid. Unfortunately, we cannot access any of the rooms because there it is fully occupied. That is just the downside to it. We cannot have access the pods. We are going to swim as we wait for our, our meal. In fact, they send you the menu in advance so that you just order everything from the starter, the main course and the dessert. So they prepare everything fresh, fresh. When we got in, of course, we were given some passion juice, freshly squeezed. Huh? Just squeezed. It just squeezed. 
Now we want to swim here as we wait for our dinner. Actually, if we wanted our if we wanted our lunch right now, we could get it. But we decided to just walk around and take photos before we have our meal. It might be our early dinner. Guacamole and chapati for starters. Welcome to the main course. The appetizer was best. Whichever whichever appetizer you take, just be assured that it will be spot on. Even this meal is good. Perfection. Now we're just finishing up with the dessert, ice cream, strawberry. So guys, now the question is, was the 6K worth it? I would say it is a bit over the top, but the services we've gotten, I would really recommend because the food was awesome. I would give the food 9 out of 10. It was that good. I just wish there were different types of desserts, but other than that, the food was perfect or maybe close to perfect and the ambience is beautiful the swing reminded me of bungee jumping and i always need a dose of adrenaline every time so if you come with a long dress you know the bali experience you will get it here for reals because you'll be swinging up to the rift valley now the pods are such amazing creation i wish i could get in but i love the place I really love the place ensure you come early if you're you are you're coming for the day package so that you can enjoy the sun on that swimming pool because right now it's a bit chilly you can even see on the valley you cannot even see the, the valley that is how cold it can get yeah but now look at how the pods look in the evening just imagine when they are lit with some yellow lights can be very very beautiful so it is a space for maybe a private event or because there are some people who come to have a birthday here and maybe just a few people but they're working on expanding the the establishment it's only two years old since 2020 2022 it's only two years old so this is good and i would rather recommend it i know you'll feel the pinch that 6,000 but the photos you live with you just say these ones are worth the they are worth the amount so guys it has been an eventful day 
and I wish to end the day at this high note. So see you tomorrow very early in the morning as we go and check out more on Fort Fort on Fort Porton. Eh, that word. More on Fort Porton. There's a lot to see. We have caves, we have palace, <laughs> we have more crater lakes. I mean, check out. Let's see you in the next video with more content, guys. Bye.